Hi, I'm Professor Naylor, and today's lecture is about becoming a time management specialist. So we're going to go into the student portal. We're going to click on the email button in the upper left hand corner to open up Microsoft Outlook. Now, you may notice that there is a different view. I have a different version of Microsoft Outlook than students have, but that shouldn't be a problem. One of the first things we want to do is find options. The way we can do that is we scan our window left to right, top to bottom, until we find the Options button. Next, in your case, you would probably scroll up or down to find Regional Settings, which is probably going to be a different option than what you'll see on the screen. Once you find Regional Settings, you need to check the current time zone. In my case, it's already preset with Eastern Time, U.S. and Canada. In your case, it may be set with Central time US and Canada which is where our CEC corporate headquarters is located right outside of Chicago so you're going to need to change from central time to eastern time US and Canada once you finish that task you're going to have to save that change so find your save button and click on it next we want to set our first calendar event so we must find our calendar button and in your case, you'll probably have two options to access your calendar. Once you access your calendar, you can begin to examine some of the button and options that you have. In your case, you may only have three buttons, a daily view, a seven-day view, and a monthly view. In my case, you can see I have five options. Basically, we will see the same thing. So one of the first examples I'd like to do is set up the calendar for September. So, in this case, I find my calendar, see where the arrows are pointing, advance the calendar if necessary, and find September 10th, just for an example purpose, so that we can set up our first calendar event, which ultimately will help us decide how much time we have or don't have, so that we can work smart and not hard, and get the job done in order for us to succeed in the pursuit of our degree. Today's example, I'm going to use HU-105, a course that runs at 825 in the morning to 945, just as an example. But it can be a different time and a different day depending on your schedule. In this case, I'll find 8 a.m., the first class that we offer in the morning, if it's a lab. But if it's a lecture, it's 825. So we're going to move from the 8 a.m. number to the right to the white dialog box. The color may be different on your version of Outlook. And I'm going to double left click until I open up an untitled appointment window. For the subject, I'm going to type in HU-105 for the course code. Again, it differs depending on what course you're going to create an event for. For the location, I'm going to type in room 202. And again, you determine which room you'll be taking the courses that you're scheduled to take. The start date and the end date is going to be on the same day. We're creating one event for one day. It's the time that you need to edit. In this case, this class starts at 825. We'll see if there's an option for 825 by clicking on the drop-down arrow. And we'll scroll up and down if necessary. And we'll find that 825 is not an option. So we'll click on the drop-down arrow to make those choices go away. And what we'll do is we'll manually, with an I-beam, go and highlight 00, zero and change that by merely typing over top of it 25. We'll do the same thing for 9 a.m. because the course ends at 9.45. And in this case, as soon as we clicked on the 0, it changed to 9.25 because it thought that the course was only running for an hour. But the cursor is in between the 2 and the 5, which enables us to backspace and replace the 2 that we just deleted with a 4 for the time that the course ends. Next, we're going to move in an orderly manner down the window. And we're going to look at the option of creating a reminder for this event. Now, this is a personal choice. You decide whether or not you're going to use reminders. But for calendar events, reminders will only appear when you're in your email window, checking your email. So if you needed to be reminded to come to class, you probably wouldn't be in your email account, so the reminder wouldn't serve any purpose. 
So I mainly use reminders when I create tasks for individual gradable assignments. So in this case, I'm going to deselect the check by putting my mouse pointer on the check and left clicking one time. So now, when your reminder window does open, you'll only have the minimal amount of important tasks or assignments that you need to be reminded about so that you prepare and score the highest grade possible for these assignments. Now some people will click inside the big white dialog box and type in additional information. That's a personal preference. At some point you have to take ownership of this calendar and your task and decide how it's going to work best for you. But for grading purposes it's not necessary in a calendar event window to type in information in the big white dialog box. Now that we've finished our first event for our calendar, we must save and close this window. The event will automatically appear in your day view and in your work week or your weekly view or your monthly view. So I'll click just to see an example of what I'm talking about. As you'll notice the work week is based on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, but your regular week is Sunday through Saturday. So it gives you the option of filtering the information that you'll see. And then if we click on the monthly view, we'll see that there is an event on the 10th. And as it stands right now, there are no other events. One of the things you may want to avoid is micromanaging your calendar or your daily uh, activity. So for example, if it takes you 10, 15 minutes to brush your teeth in the morning and uh, wash your face, you may want to lump that into one category, whether it be 30 or 60 minutes, and call it hygiene. This way you do not have to pick uh, events for every 15 minutes, every 10 minutes, and make this more of a uh, challenge or make it more of a tedious activity that you will begin to shy away from and not use because it's just too much work. With all that said, this is our first event and we'll continue to talk about how to use this feature uh, more effectively but right now that's the end of the first part of this lecture in helping you become a time management specialist.